we still have a couple of things that I, you know, we should talk about in terms of like what we have seen Trump do. And uh, and by Trump, I'm talking about the Republican Party. I mean, there really is no daylight here. Uh, and when I say Trump, I'm also talking about, uh, obviously, the Fox News. There is no daylight between any of these entities. Um, on Fox News, you get Shep Smith came out and said, uh, you know, to uh, the Fox News viewers during the afternoon, there is no threat from the caravan. They don't carry diseases. They're on foot. They're not a, a total evasion like Michelle Malkin said on the network. It doesn't matter that they're all of military age males like Gorka said on the network. They don't carry diseases like was said on the network. And, you know, I watched that and I thought, like, th this is not helpful. This is Shep Smith making, you know, uh, just basically operating with his core brand proposition. I'm the guy on uh, in the loony bin who uh, basically gets up and says something rational. And it makes all the other people working at Fox feel like, well, at least we're delivering the other side of the argument. Right. And so, frankly, I, I, I'm, I'm done with Shep Smith's you know, game that he plays there. Uh, he may be sincere about it, but he serves a, a bad function in my estimation. But I'm off uh, topic here. But the point being that we're seeing all this. Um, we're seeing the, uh, the, the rhetoric that has inspired violence. We're seeing um, the, uh, the, 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 the sort of the claims that they're going to remove birthright citizenship, all as a function of leading up to the election. And then another thing happened this week that I'm also convinced was about the election. It was sort of a twofer. And that was the attempt by some right wingers coming out of like Gateway Pundit, this guy, Jack Berkman, who has, I think, a, a radio show or a YouTube show or something to that effect to um, come up with a story where Robert Mueller had apparently, according to this story, had uh, sexually assaulted a woman in 1974, I believe it was, uh, at a law firm. And the whole story falls apart in one of the most ridiculous and comedic ways. Uh, y you know this story about, what is it, Josh Wall? Yeah. Well, just, uh, okay, so just uh, tell us what, what you know about this story, and I will fill in some of those blanks. <laughs> Well, you probably probably Jacob have Wall. more on Jacob Wall. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Jacob Wall, my, my, he's one of my favorite right wing tweeters because you know he has this 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 little shtick that he does that he said he writes and he's done it like I don't know at least half a dozen times where I'm sit I've just been sitting in a hipster coffee house in downtown L A. And I just overheard this conversation where they're all saying that, you know, Trump's actually a pretty good guy or something like that. You know, all these different things in a hipster coffee house in downtown L.A. I can almost guarantee you, I don't know what hipster coffee house he's talking about, but I live in L.A., but I'm going to guarantee, I'm going to pretty much guarantee these conversations never happened. If there is this place, this never happened. It's like a, it's like a cheap Twitter version of Tom Friedman and his, you know, I, right. I heard, I had a conversation with a taxi driver, you know, that whole thing. And it's hilarious. And, and he was caught out on it just recently. But in any case, apparently he is in, he has some, what he called, what was the name of his intelligence firm? I, can't, I don't even know. Surefire Intelligence. Surefire Intelligence. And it turns out, and, and this, this, this firm, which isn't apparently really a firm, it's just something that he set up on LinkedIn, I guess, with a bunch, <laughs> with a bunch of stock photos, including Christopher Walsh, the actor, as being one of the principals of his company. I mean, he's really, this guy's not that bright. Um, but, you know, he, he's playing with fire here. I mean, I, I don't know what he thought, why he thought he could get away with this, but they were apparently calling up women and offer he and uh, apparently under the auspices of this guy Jack Berkman, who is a more seasoned right wing operative, although right. not very bright himself. Correct. Um, yeah, and so they were calling up women and offering them money to say, and they put, even put it in emails. I mean, I can't even believe they actually wrote this down, and the emails exist, and now they're out in the public. That uh, offering women money to say that they had had 
they had been assaulted by Robert Mueller. I mean, the, the, the play is clear, right? I mean, we understand what they're trying to do here, which is, you know, get, get, tangle Robert Mueller up in the Me Too movement and uh, paying somebody to say that it happened. And as far as I know, maybe you can tell me otherwise, um, there were actually some women who evidently were willing to do that. Uh, but what happened was is that the women, some of the women who were being approached uh, went to Robert Mueller and also went to the media and said, look, this right. thing's happening. I mean, here's, here's the proof you know, that these guys are asking me. And uh, so they got exposed before this thing ever, ever hit. Yeah, that's basically what happened. It fell apart. I mean, the uh, apparently uh, there was um, uh, some online uh, journalists who had sort of gotten suspicious about it. It had been marketed around. I mean, it feels like it was a twofer in the sense that they were hoping to smear uh, Mueller. And we're at the point now, right, where you can just getting a story to rise above a certain level get uh, put out there just for a moment. It can be completely retracted or corrected or whatnot, but it lives in the right wing um, ecosphere forever, right? Like I saw clips of people out front of um, uh, uh, one of Trump's rallies that were, you know, saying like, oh, I've heard that the bombs were sent. uh, Obama himself sent them to himself. And so didn't Hillary and maybe a Bernie support as Sanders supporter sent it. And, you know, this is after the guy's been caught. This stuff lives beyond, (laughs) beyond, you know, any, any way of pulling it back. So I think there was a sense that they wanted to try and get it into the bloodstream, but then they also wanted to burn the reporters who reported on it. And maybe that's why they made the story sort of unravel so easily, but it's like almost like a bomb maker in their uh, bomb shop they don't know quite what they're doing, and it blows up in their face. Yeah. And that's yeah. exactly what happened to these guys. Um, and, uh, I mean, I imagine there might be some, you know, I think paying money to get people to publicly attest to a lie about a special prosecutor, you know, seems like maybe you're obstructing justice in some fashion. I mean, I wouldn't want to be these guys right now if I wanted to not be in prison. Let's put it that way. I mean, I'm no yeah, lawyer. Yeah, I wouldn't but... either. I mean, I think, I think, I think this was—they were in way over their heads. You know, I mean, this is not this is not Roger Stone caliber. Um, no, apparently, uh, caliber, uh, you know, NBC. And even he... NBC contacted this um, uh, Jacob Wall. And apparently he stopped returning their phone calls after they left a message or sent a message that the number for surefire intelligence, which Wall claimed to have no relationship to the phone number, the main phone number forwards to Wall's mom's voicemail. Come on. I mean, you know, this is just this is just pathetic. I mean, it it makes uh, what's his name? Project Veritas. James O'Keefe looked like a, you know, like a top flight super spy. by Uh, comparison. Well, I mean, it's it's a joke. Listen, we've been talking about what the Republicans have been doing to try and motivate their base uh, for much of this show. We got one segment left. When we come back, let's talk about uh, what's going to happen coming just a couple of days. in terms of these midterm elections, I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. I'll be right back with the great Digby.